I've got an interesting video for everyone today. So we're going to broadly look at derivatives of multiplicative inverses of functions. And this may not seem super interesting as it's a fairly easy derivative to take in general with real valued functions. But what if we're in some sort of arithmetic system where we do not have commutativity of multiplication? So that could occur a couple of different ways. We could have matrix valued functions, or maybe we could have quaternionic functions. So those would be functions whose output are quaternions or something like that. So anyway, let's look at the most basic case first, and then we'll look at one of these more general cases. So I'll maybe head this as something that you might recall from a differential calculus class. And that is if you take the derivative of the multiplicative inverse of a function. So the multiplicative inverse of the function f of x would be 1 over f of x. That's because they multiply together to give you the number 1. You would get something like negative f prime of x over f of x quantity squared. And if you want to look at a couple of the details of why that's the case, notice we could write this as the derivative with respect to x of f of x to the negative 1 power. And then taking the derivative by the chain rule, we get negative f of x to the negative 2 power times f prime of x. But that clearly turns into this thing that's right above just by rewriting this negative second exponent as something in the denominator squared. So I guess that brings us to the main question here, which is a what if question. And that is our multiplication is not commutative. So it may not seem like we've used commutativity of multiplication here, but in fact we have, and the step where we did it was this step right here where we used this chain rule. And you can't really see that without the proof of the chain rule, but we won't go into that. Okay, so now let's look at this question, what if multiplication is not commutative? So what I mean by that is if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, f of x times g of x is not necessarily g of x times f of x. So let's forget that we have commutativity and then derive a general formula for the derivative of the multiplicative inverse of a function, just like this general formula that we have right here. Okay, so let's look at f of x times f of x to the negative one, and notice that multiplies together to give us the number one. This is of course assuming that f of x has a multiplicative inverse, but we'll keep that as an assumption for now. Okay, but now let's take derivatives of both sides here. And let's notice if we take a derivative of this left-hand side, we can use the product rule, as long as we're careful with the ordering. So we would have f prime of x times f of x inverse, and then plus f of x times f of x inverse prime, so that would be the derivative of the inverse function, equals the derivative of one, which is zero. Okay, so this looks a little messy right here, but this is the object that we're in fact wanting to get at. This would be our derivative with respect to x of f of x to the negative first power. So let's solve for that. So we can move this term, which I'm underlining in red, over to the other side of the equation. And that'll give us f of x times the derivative with respect to x of f of x to the negative first power. I'll rewrite it like that because I think it's a little cleaner. Equals negative f prime of x times f of x inverse. And then finally, we can left multiply this entire equation by f of x to the negative one. In other words, the multiplicative inverse of f of x, and then we'll achieve our formula that we need. So that will be the derivative with respect to x of f of x all to the negative one power is in fact equal to negative f of x to the negative one power times f prime of x times f of x to the negative one power. So notice we've got this minus sign just as we had over here. 
and we've got two copies of this f of x to the minus one power. It's just in this case, they are hugging this derivative of f of x, and we can't commute them past f prime because we do not have commutativity of addition. So this would be like our final version of this formula. Now that we've derived this derivative of a reciprocal formula, let's go ahead and look at an example where this kind of thing actually occurs. So for our example, we'll look at a function which is defined as a matrix like this. So you can think about this as a function from the real numbers to two by two matrices. So let's write that down, two by two matrices with real entries. And it turns out for all values of x except for zero, this thing is invertible. And in fact, we can write the inverse down pretty easily. So a of x inverse is equal to, so it'll be one over the determinant, but notice the determinant is just the product of the diagonals, given this is an upper triangular matrix, so the determinant is x squared, and then we have to swap the order of the things on the diagonal, but those are the same, and then negate the off diagonal. But that just gives us something like this. So multiplying this one over x squared through will give us a one over x here, a minus one here, zero, one over x. And now let's write a quick claim of what we indeed want to show now that we've got these parts built up. And the claim should be just to verify that formula that we had on the last board. And that is the derivative with respect to x of a of x inverse. Well, the multiplicative inverse should be negative. Let's see, we have a inverse of x times a prime of x times a inverse of x. But I should be careful about my parentheses here. This is really a, in, a of x inverse, and this is also a of x inverse. Okay, so that's the claim that would verify that the formula we got on the last board at least works for this case. Okay, so let's see how this will go. We'll just start with the right-hand side. So we'll have minus, I'll just recopy that. So that's a of x to the minus one, a prime of x, and then a of x multiplicative inverse. And now let's insert all of those parts. So that's gonna be a minus sign. And then the inverse of our a of x matrix is one over x minus one, zero, one over x. And then the derivative of our original matrix, just done component-wise, will give us 1, 2x, 0, 1. And then we've got another copy of this first matrix. So that's just pretty straightforward to write down. And now we'll group these. So I'll group the minus sign with this first one. And then I'll group these last two and perform matrix multiplication or scalar multiplication as necessary. So this is gonna give me a minus one over x, a one, a zero, and a minus one over x for that first product. And then I have to do matrix multiplication for this second bit. So swiveling this in here will give me a one over x. Swiveling this in here will give me, let's see, negative one plus two, which is the number one, swiveling this in here gives me zero, and here I get one over x. But now let's multiply those together and notice that we get minus one over x squared, zero, zero, minus one over x squared. But that's exactly the derivative of this thing right here. So maybe since I'm running out of room, I'll underline this in yellow, and this is gonna be equal to this thing underlined in yellow which finishes the proof of this claim. And if you've liked this video, uh, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And also I've done some other linear algebra videos on the channel if you'd like to check them out. There should be one on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop.